Hey, good morning, class. Welcome in. Uh, we are about to have our second discussion on this unit of savings, investing, retirement stocks. Uh, our first discussion, we took a, took a look at why we save and what importance it has for us um, in the future and how it can be beneficial down the road. Now, today, we're going to look at something that we looked at a little bit uh, the other day when we started jumping in the stock market. But we're going to talk about stocks and bonds, okay? So let's get into this, um, and we'll get started. So, uh, you know, understand this. Again, we look at the stock market. It is much like when you start an entrepreneurship, uh, much like any kind of you know economic system, there's going to be a lot of risk involved. So again, getting involved in the stock market is risky. It can pay off. It can be beneficial. You can make a lot of money down the road, but you could also lose a lot as well. And I want to make sure that we're clear on that to start things off. But let's take a look at stocks themselves. And we'll also take a look at bonds. So again, corporations are basically are going to be formed by selling their shares of stock, okay? By issuing stocks for sale, uh, a company obtains funds for use in expanding its business. So if a business is doing well, they're going to go public, right? They're going to go on the stock market. They're going to be available for people to invest into their company, okay? Now, shares of stock uh, entitles the buyer to a certain uh, part of future profits and assets of the corporation selling the stock. So, uh, if you want to get involved, you would be a microscopic, tiny fraction of, you know, you'd have some ownership into the company, all right? Now, the person who buys the stock, all right, therefore uh, becomes a part owner of that corporation. And again, very, very uh, small amount, but you become a part owner by being a stockholder or shareholder. Now, let's talk about the stock returns. This is where money is made, okay? So the stockholders, that is the group. These are the people who have invested in a corporation and own some shares of stock. All right, remember, um, when we look at uh, something that a corporation does, we call it a dividend. A dividend is going to be paid out uh, when a company makes a profit. So there are two things here. be capital gain and capital loss, okay? So with capital gain, um, it's an increase in the value of an asset from the time it was purchased to the time it was sold. So uh, there's that old saying, again, buy low, sell high. So the example I'm using here is say someone buys a stock at $20 a share, okay? And later on, they sell that at 30 Well, they're looking to get a capital gain of 10 bucks. okay? In reality, people have much higher numbers than this. But that old mentality is to buy low, sell high. You know, sell when the stock is at its healthiest point, okay? Now, capital loss... This is a decrease in the value of an asset from the time it was purchased to the time it was sold. So this would be the opposite, okay? So this is where people are losing money, all right? You are losing, um, you know, your, your share of stock, and you're losing um, its value. All right, so let's go into bonds. Now, bonds aren't, you know, they're still around. Uh, they're not as common as, as much anymore. But, again, when we look at a bond, a bond is a certificate issued by a company uh, or the government in exchange for borrowed funds, Buying a bond uh, does not make someone a part of the corporation. So that's how it's different. You don't become a part of a corporation if you buy a bond. Now, typically, bonds are less risky than stocks. All right? A bondholder lends for a period of time uh, to a company and is paid interest on that amount. Now, there are different types of bonds. First one we're going to talk about is a tax-exempt bond. All right? These are bonds that are sold uh, at local and state governments. All right? Interest paid on the bond is not taxed by the federal government. So tax exempt, uh, you get a bond uh, locally or you get a bond with, with the state, all right, you're not going to um, be taxed by the federal government, okay? Savings bonds, very common, all right? Bonds issued by the federal government uh, as a way of borrowing money, all right? They are purchased at half the face value and e they basically increase uh, every six months until the face value is reached, okay? So again, savings bonds, a lot of folks like to invest in those, again, minimizing the risk. Ah, now we have something called T-bills, T-notes, and T-bonds. We're going to talk about that. So the Treasury Department uh, of the federal government uh, also sells several types of larger investments. Now, Treasury bills, T-bills, okay? Uh, these are basically certificates that are issued by the U.S. Treasury in exchange for a minimum amount of $100, and these mature from a few days to 26 weeks, okay? So you're putting in $100, you're going to let it mature. It could be a couple weeks. It could be um, a couple days. It depends, all right? But the max is 26 weeks. And we also have treasury notes or T-notes, 
All right, these are certificates issued by the U.S. Treasury in exchange for minimum amounts of $100. All right, and these mature two to 10 years. All right, so Treasury notes stay in there for a long time. Treasury bonds, now these are certificates issued by the U.S. Treasury uh, in exchange for minimum amounts of $100. So you put in $100, and these mature at 30 years. So sometimes, again, a family will establish a Treasury bond when someone is born, and they'll be able to access it when they're 30 years old. Other people, they're not able to access this until they're, you know, at retirement age, okay? So these are tax-exempt from local and state governments, but not the federal government. So, again, there's no local or state tax, but the feds, they're going to tax it, okay? Now, let's talk about stock and bond markets. So we look at a stock broker. A broker is a person who acts as a go-between, between the buyers and the sellers of stocks and bonds. So a broker kind of is that middleman, okay, and acts as such, all right? Um, there are over 100 online brokerage firms. About 20 million American investors use the Internet to make daily trades each day, all right? So from, from Monday to Friday, um, you've got about 20 million Americans. Uh, and, and again, in today's world, that number is growing. Now, there are some major stock exchanges, okay? Brokerage houses communicate with the busy floors of stock exchanges. Uh, this is where you would always see all the people on uh, the stock market floor, you know, with those old tickets, buying and selling, buying and selling, okay? Uh, the largest stock, Stark, excuse me, Stark, Tony Stark? Uh, the largest stock market uh, is in the New York Stock Exchange, all right? Chicago, London, and Tokyo also have notable stock exchanges. Okay, our... Let's see. Now, we'll talk about over-the-counter markets or OTC markets. Now, over-the-counter markets, uh, these are electronic uh, purchase and sale of stocks and bonds, uh, often of smaller companies, which often takes place outside organized stock exchanges. So these are kind of your mom-and-pop shops, kind of in the, the underground, okay, for, for the most part. Uh, these are not in your organized stock exchanges. Um, and a lot of times, again, it can be done on the Internet. Uh, we have stock market indexes, all right? This is a measure of what is happening to a given set of stock prices for a specified list of companies. The most well-known is the Dow Jones. So when we look at the health of the economy, we look at the health of the stock market, we're often checking the Dow Jones. Well, what did the Dow do today? Is it up? Is it down? Again, this is what we're always constantly looking at. The New York Stock Exchange uh, Euronext bond and the New York Stock Exchange MX bonds are the two largest bond exchanges. So when we look at bond exchange, those are the ones we want to look at as being the largest. Okay, let's talk about mutual funds and regulations. So what is a mutual fund? So a mutual fund is basically uh, an investment company that's going to pool together the funds of many individuals to buy stocks, bonds, or other investments. So a mutual fund, you've got a lot of people that are looking to make more money, okay? And they're putting a certain amount of risk um, when they set up that mutual fund. All right. Now, there's also something called a money market fund. All right. This is the type of mutual fund that uses investors' funds uh, to make short-term loans to businesses and banks. Okay. So we see a lot of money management here. Now, the stock market is heavily regulated by the SEC, not the Southeastern Conference known for athletics, but the SEC is the Securities and Exchange Commission. Okay. Congress passed the Securities Exchange Act of 1934 to avoid another stock market crash. The SEC oversees all activity and transactions. So the SEC's job, we talk about government intervention, right, is to ensure that there's no funny business taking place on Wall Street. You know, and, and I'll let you think about that because on the surface, again, yeah, you would think they'd be doing their job, but as we know throughout time, throughout history, there's definitely been some funny business um, that has taken place. Uh, most recently, again, with the, the big debate over GameStop and the stock that soared uh, in January and early February, that was something that the SEC had to kind of look into and oversee. Okay? All right, folks. Again, thanks for joining us. We're going to have another journal log. I hope your stocks are doing well. Hope you're making some money this week. And uh, we'll reconvene after the weekend. Take care, folks. Have a good one.